This week's show is all about catching creatures from the deep. Swordfish, tilefish, palm fret, and others can be found in the depths of the ocean, and freshwater anglers can tie on their deep running crankbaits, drop shot rigs, and vertical jigging spoons to hook monster sized freshwater fish. We're talking all about deep dropping here on the Texas Insider Fishing Report, which starts right now. Welcome to the Texas Insider Fishing Report. Presented by Yamaha. We are back for another hot weekend of catching here on the Texas Insider Fishing Report. And with me, I have Captain Jim Ross filling in for Rick. Jim, as always, thank you for being here and taking on the deep dropping theme we've got going on this week. You know, it's one of those things that I don't know a lot about, so I'm really looking forward to this show because I'm yeah. going to learn something as well as everybody out there. We so this are. is going to be a great show for everybody. You're absolutely right. Well, we are going into a long 4th of July weekend, so there will be plenty of time to get out there on the water. So before we head into our first region, let's see how Dave is holding up over there at the workbench. What say you, Dave? I'm holding it up. Holding, holding it up. up the bench. <laughs> Always over there. Yeah, we're doing good today. We're going to be uh, talking a little bit about that deep dropping, and uh, it's a great place to do it. There's not a whole lot of current out there in Texas, so it makes it a great place to do it. Here we go. Lots of tricks coming your way. All yeah. right. Well, we're starting our Star Spangled Banner deep drop in the Front Runner Boats Upper Coast region, and rightfully so, with Captain Carl Weston. Get us on the fish, Carl. Well, let's talk about deep dropping here in Texas. This is a very cool fishing tactic and one of our favorites, to be honest, guys. That's a bit of a run for us here in Texas in the upper coast, but the trip is well worth it. We can go from 300 foot of water all the way up to 1800 foot of water. This stretch gives us an amazing opportunity to land a variety of very cool and sometimes very strange looking species. The deepest depth, depths are such an amazing wonder and you never know what you're going to bring up, guys, when you're deep dropping, so that's what makes it so fun. We have rock piles that start at around 300 foot and go up to the 450 foot range that hold scamp grouper here, gag, and smaller Warsaw. And as you bump out 450 to say the 700 foot range, we hold yellow edge grouper, barrel fish. This is where the mud flats begin in that water depth range. And that's where we're going to start chasing golden tile fish. 800 to 1800 foot depths, still the tile fish out, it's out to maybe 12, and then that's where you're going to start to uh, catch your swordfish, guys. Now, moving on to equipment, here's a secret right here. Good equipment and rigging is everything. You know, large single hook setup is what I use for Warsaw and large amberjack. I start with a 16 ounce trocar circle hook tied to a 400 pound diamond moy leader. That leads to a 160-pound Diamond Mamoy braid. It's a combination that you cannot beat. All right, having down, you know, heading down to the smaller fish, on our tackle is the absolute go-to on anything for tile fish, multiple tile fish rigs. The glow at the end of that uh, hook, they got those glow skirts, is the only way to go. I always tip the hooks with fish bites. Keep my bait on, stays when you're going up and down, up in that water column. I also love... Uh, how, how you can just hang the towel fish on your sea sucker fisherman's cup when you're washing them off, drying, moving from spot to spot is really helpful. Okay, let's look at swordfish line on leaders. When we're targeting swordfish, these guys are exactly what you're, I know what they're doing when it comes to deep dropping rigs also. R&R Diamond make the best in the business. And I have a picture today of an R&R towel fish rig with, as we said, our little secret fish bite headed down into action. So, Bumping from deep dropping over to redfish, look, it's on again. I can't say enough about it. It seems like we're beating a dead horse on this one every week, but you know, the hot spot is everywhere. Sabine Lake is still reporting schools of slot reds are chasing bait all along the shores, along the jetties. Top water has been a lot of fun in the morning and late, right before dark. And as always, live shrimp or small croaker on the popping cork might be the one choice that comes in first. But many other options are always a close second, guys. Artificial shrimp on a jig head is one of my favorites. The Fish Bite Spike Club in white will catch almost any fish inshore, as does the Berkeley Chopo 90 in black chrome. No matter what your tactics or your bait choices are, get out there in the water and catch some of these beautiful fish, guys. I have a picture today of Shannon with a red and a trout. Nice. So, bumping, nice. Off, bumping off shore, guys. Let's talk about kingfish. They're coming in great this year. They're making a great comeback this summer. 
We've seen numbers increasing and much bigger fish this year already compared to last year. Uh, you know, this this positive, you know, definitely makes for a much better day offshore. Man, a box of Big Kings, Red Snapper, and hey, maybe a cup of 10 cup whiskey at the end of the day for a smile on all of our face. <laughs> and the Kingfish, you know, they're just so much fun to fight. These Kings give the best aerial show out there. It's hard to beat the fight they put on when they're hooked. Big Kings, you know, have that name. They call them a smoker. And the reason they call them that is when they take the drag first, the line, it looks like smoke coming off the reel. And no kidding, this is a really neat thing to see. So guys, jump in your front rudder boat. You get those pad reels to set to some light drag. Also, if you can catch some hardtails on those killer r and you need to hook them on a wire leader. Slow troll around structure right now. And I bet it won't be long before that smoker hits. Here's our friends, uh, Starbright, come in. You know, the catch is only part of the experience. Cleaning up all that blood is, is what, the, you know, the real fun part is. If you own a boat, you know, and they carry all of your cleaning needs. Today, I have a picture of Mr. Corey with a kingfish that looks like he might have to clean up after this one. So, bouncing right over to Ling. Wrapping up this week's report, let's look on the Ling bite here in the upper coast. And man, it's hot right now, the temperature and the Ling bite. These fish are getting bigger by the day. And we've had reports of these nice fish all around the marker buoys and the channels, as well as the near shore uh, oil rigs. We have caught nice Ling out as far as 400 foot of water on an island rigged with ballyhoo. So, please, you never know what these fish are going to hit. I have to admit, some silly ideas have worked in catching these fish. Uh, and getting their attention over the years and sometimes you know the crazier things have worked to make them bite from tossing live shad freelining half a hot dog on a heavy truck or hook yeah i said hot dog uh pulling up to a structure revving up my yamahas at neutral to get them to come to the surf i'm, I'm telling you don't stop trying new tactics when it comes to a land you get one by the dock the jetty wherever you're fishing don't give up i say i spot one now i immediately drop my rodan Trolling motor hit the hole. This way I can stay near the spot of structure and fish right what, where that fish was on and keep it right there and have a much better chance of catching him and bringing him to the boat. And Corey, once again, he, he topped the list twice today. Beautiful ling he caught. And you can see that trolling motor in the back he uses also. Oh, that's a oh. nice one right there. Did you catch that one on a hot dog? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> this weekend's going to be a great time Probably. to throw some hot dogs at some Ling. <laughs> well, thanks, Carl. Here's the hot spots for the Upper Coast region. <laughs> Captain Carl says, wow. Inshore, you want to target the redfish near the jetties on the incoming tide. Use a white fish bites fight club shrimp on a quarter ounce jig head. And then offshore, targeting the king mackerel with the hard tails. Caught on your R&R tackle sabiki rigs. Rig them on a wire leader and slow troll them around that inshore structure. A hot dog caught there. We learn something new every, every day, day, Jim. Every and you day. said it. We were learning new things on this week's show. So there you go. <laughs> right. Give you a pack of hot dogs. I guess so. Our lower fresh region guide has some tips for us when it comes to the bass swimming in the deep. So, Matt, tell us what we got to do. All right, Bray, let's get this thing rolling. All right. this, is, this is my favorite time of the year to chase bass out in deep water. You know, those fish, they move out to the steep drop-offs, you know, those rock drops. Uh, they love to relate to that depth change because it allows them easy access to com comfortable water temperature and lets them adjust to the, the level that the bait fish are using with minimal effort. They don't have to swim far. They can go up or down. Uh, you know, and I... I target these these fish mainly with deep diving crankbaits, football jigs, and Texas rig big worms for my best success. You know, but those fish will stay out there all summer. This is just the beginning. Uh, gets better as it goes. You know, and and don't let the heat cause you to miss out on this opportunity. That gummy, it's just summer. It's going to be hot. Get out there and catch you a big one. <laughs> Let's move on down and just start talking about the largemouth. Uh, Mike Bates in a report from Joe Canyon. He says the water levels be begun to fall just because of evaporation from the heat. Hydrilla is topping out in a lot of areas around the lake. The early morning action around it is very good. Top waters, frogs, chatterbait, swim baits, and the Berkeley Generals have been the best ticket up there against that grass. How long that bite lasts depends on the weather. Windy, cloudy days are the best to extend it. Uh, if it's bright and calm, that's not going to last long. Uh, there's still some deeper bass out in that 10 to 15 foot range. 
Texas rig generals, Carolina rig worms, deep diving crankbaits are working on those fish. Uh, one thing to keep your eye out for, he says twice last week he found schooling bass on shad in very shallow water. Uh, most of them were two to three pounders, but there was also a few big ones mixed in. Uh, swim baits and jerk shad are the best, best you know, presentation for those fish. He said, don't be fooled. He said, those those schools looked like white bass schooling, but they weren't. They were actually large mouth, and they were much bigger than the white bass would be. Greg Boykson report from Somerville. He said, Somerville is still very slow this last week from the heat. Uh, large mouth been biting occasionally real early on shad-colored topwaters. Uh, poppers and jay walkers are best along the rocky banks. Then move on out to the isolated brush piles and rock piles in 12 to 15 feet with a plum or a blue flat 10 inch worm or a football jig to try to get you a big bite. Fed County is in its normal summer swing. Your best bet is to start out deep on the main lake points and drop offs or, or where the road beds cross. Carolina rig, you know, big worm or a fluke style bait and that 12 to 18 feet of water is your best shot. There's also a ton of fish have made their way into the discharge because of the current. They like that moving water. Uh, they'll be there for the next few weeks. Same techniques are best. Uh, you know, concentrate on the rocks of where that water's moving with a, you know, Carolina rig or Texas rig big worm. Uh, you're going to catch a ton of fish doing that for the next, you know, period of time. My Falcon Lake bass, they've been a little bit stubborn this week. Uh, my numbers are down at the moment. And that's going to improve because the water is falling, but don't let that fool you. We've caught a bunch of giants this week, you know, um, less bites, but man, the size has been been great. You know, that's the cool thing about it down here. You can catch a giant on the next cast. Football jigs, Texas rigs have been my best bet. Uh, don't let this 109 degree heat keep you out. As long as there's a breeze, you, you don't pass out. <laughs> uh, got two bass pictures this week. Uh, got Natalie with a big old Falcon Lake special. Oh. She's caught this week. I got, I just, I, I love it when there's that big a grin holding one up. That was her personal best, biggest one she'd ever caught. I'm sorry, uh, but when is there not a big grin when you have <laughs> your Falcon specials? I, I, I try to keep grins on people's faces. You're right? doing a good job. <laughs> and that second one, uh, that's a Mike Bates Choke Canyon customer there with, with a big fish from Choke Canyon. Uh, wow. Got one more report. The catfish and falcon, Ram Reyes, has, has sent me a report. The channel cat and the blue cats are chewing. Uh, falling water's got them relating to the creek channels and river ledges. Fresh shad and, sh and shrimp are best for the keeper-sized catfish or those trophy-sized blues, which there's a bunch of down here. Big, fresh-cut gizzard shad or carp fished on the bottom are your best shot. Well, I appreciate that. I'll... Uh... Take Thanks, your uh, hot spots for the lower fresh region from here, Matt. You know, he didn't mention hot dogs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Fayette County bass are in their predictable summer haunts. Points, road beds, and rocks in, in the discharge are all productive. Carolina rigs and big shaky heads are all best choices right now. Get out and have some fun, he says, even though it's hot out there, 109 degrees. Are you kidding me? It, that's Come hot, on, but you know what? He's right. It is summertime. It is going to be hot. Well, God. he made the point. <laughs> Get out early. Get out early, yep. That's it. Get out and throw those hot dogs. All right, we're seeing what the Lower Coast region has in store for our 4th of July weekend next, but first, Dave has some rigging and techniquing to do deep dropping style at the workbench. Dave. Yes. Yep, yes. we're going we're to talk about going deep, you know. Uh, Staying cool, going every, deep. Everybody's got to uh, go deep sometime. So. That's true. We'll be back. The Texas Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Ameritrail. Load, launch, relax. Fenwick. Feel everything. Bahio Sunglasses. Blue light blocking. Radically clear lenses. Sportsman's Adventures with Captain Rick Murphy. Fishing for adventure. Berkeley. Your fish, our science. And Skeeter Performance Fishing Boats. Eat, sleep, fish. Well, we're at the Rigs and Techniques table today with Dave. And yes, Dave, sir. You know, there's a lot of stuff here 
And yeah. When you, and when you turn the lights out, it glows. Yeah, there's a lot of that. So and, that's you know, kind of cool. We are fishing in the dark when we were going out that deep water. Now, see, the reason a lot of this has happened, this deep water fishing, is, uh, you know, a lot of the closer places to shore are getting hammered. More and more people are fishing. People fishing them, yeah. So, you know, yeah. the bottom spots are getting more and more crowded. So the guys who could go further offshore into the deeper water catching these deep species that don't get a lot of pressure, uh, it's a really good thing to do on a day when you're slow troll, you know, day, slow of day trolling yeah, or yeah. You're not catching, doing something else. You go deep and go try to catch some of these, you know, really yeah, the only place strange you see and good eating fish that are deep, deep, deep. The only place you see a boat deep. with three motors on the back of it anymore is so far offshore or at the sandbar. Right, right. <laughs> so, you know, you can catch uh, yellow edge grouper in deep water, snowy grouper, swordfish, golden tiles, all these great eating cold oh, water delicious, species. Delicious. They're all they're all really good. And the great thing about fishing in the Gulf out there, there's not a whole lot of current. You know, it's not as bad as in yeah. some of the other places where they try to do this uh, daytime sword fishing. Uh, the, the, the Gulf of Mexico out there, you know, if you have a two knot current, it's it's whipping, you know. So you can really, you know, fish really, you know, really? straight up and down, yeah. almost like cat fishing for some of these swordfish and gotcha. some of these other other things. Now we're gonna look for water between deep dropping is you know usually 500 feet and over, 500 to 1200 feet is probably where you're gonna be doing most of your fishing. I got to fish once in the Bahamas on a deep drop trip, right when braid first came out and braided line is the reason we can do this yeah, now yeah you know it keeps the it keeps the line straight up and down it keeps the line straight up and down there's no stretch we can feel every bite when the very first uh bit of uh of uh braided line came out we did a, a, a story for sport fishing magazine we fished in bimini with ron chapman mm -hmm. who's one of the pioneers of deep drop fishing and we were fishing in 1900 feet of water Ooh. which is uh the empire state building with a football field on top of it. Mm. So that's 1,900 feet. And we were fishing with big barracuda, slabs of barracuda, with that braided line on dual reels, which you know you could crank forward and then crank backward and yeah. still get line. Yeah. It's an Italian thing. And uh, we set nine world records in three days because every, just about every fish that we caught was something that nobody ever and cranked never up caught on before. A hand, hand exactly, caught so on all ta reel. they're all tackle records. But and what are we going to use to catch these fish? Well, we're going to again. We're going to use braided lines and circle hooks for mm -hmm. sure. You know, you're, you're you you got to have a maybe a 50 wide something that you can load up with. Uh, if you're fishing in 1,200 feet of water, you're going to at least want 2,000 2,500 feet of line. Yeah, and probably closer to the 2,500 feet. And you know, uh, I like to use braided line, diamond braid 80. Mm -hmm. If you're using 80 pound diamond braid, there's and you're just, and there's not much that's gonna break that. You're gonna catch just about every fish. And it's thin enough that you can pack a whole lot on a, on a, on a rod. On a manageable size rod and on reel. On a rod and reel, correct. Okay. And especially a 50 pound. You know, the, the 50 pound will probably do as well. 50 pound braid mm -hmm. will catch 99% of the fish that you're gonna be using out there, even when you're using an electric reel. Um, you're gonna drop in like four or five minutes. So it's a long way down there. We're gonna be using weights. You, you can probably get away with three pounds if it's not, if there's no current at all, if it start to whipping, you know, any kind of current there, you can go up to seven or eight pounds of weight yeah. just to get down on the bottom. Yeah. Especially when you're targeting tile fish, tile fish like to eat on the bottom and it's better if it's not moving. Uh, if you can get your thing to stay there on the bottom, it's okay, you're gonna do better with the tiles. Right. Uh, the bigger ones will eat stuff that's dragging, but the, if you're in a big school of small ones, you wanna try to stay on the bottom on and keep it down there. And okay. fish bites is a great thing to use for bait. Uh, it, it's also a great thing to use in conjunction with other baits. Squids, sardines, any dead bait, big chunks of barracuda with the skin on to hold it on there and then slide some fish bites on there. That el helps it hang on. Also, it has the same scent and everything else will, as, as, a, as the regular formula. So, you know, you get a lot of bites. This is a titanium, uh, deep drop rig, folds up nice, you know, so you can folds store it nicely. as well. Yep. And, and, and they make all kinds, they even have some with little danglers on them, you can get them with squids, you know, they make all different kinds. Rays, you know, the R&R &R deep drop, they're the ones that we really like to use. I noticed that some of these are have relatively small hooks. Yeah, yeah, because you know, you're depending on the size of the fish you're targeting. Sometimes you're wanting to catch a bunch of winchmen or even the little tiles that are four to eight, you know, pounds. But I'll be honest with you, 
you can catch really big fish on smaller hooks as well. A lot of the jigs that we use use way smaller hooks than that, and we catch big groupers on them. So. Well, there's obviously a whole lot more that we can Just talk so about. Just so much, because there's so many different things to, down there to target. We didn't to even talk the about the region. grouper rigs or anything. <laughs> That's all well, right. Well, Bree, where are we going next? We're learning a lot. All right, there's a lot that lies beneath in the lower coast region, and Captain Chad Kinney is letting us in on all of the deep dropping goodies. So, Chad, let's hear it. Sorry, I love deep dropping. I've been doing it for years and years and years, and it's just a lot of fun. It's one of my passions. So, like I said, one of the favorite things I can do is go deep dropping. You can go, like Dave was talking about, I mean, we do sword fishing. Uh, you can target for towel fish. Uh, right now, um, the, the snapper season, federal water snapper season is open. So, you know, you can reach those guys. It's not real deep, and you're two, 400 feet deep. You start reaching at 400, it gets pretty dang deep right there. Um, but if you're going out a, a thousand foot or plus, you know, it's like the swords or the towels and stuff like that. Um, you can do manual stuff, but uh, it, I've had the pin uh, hooker electrics. They're they're phenomenal. I've got a pair of these things. They're like bulletproof. I got them with the with the diamond braid on there, like Dave was talking about, 80 pound. These things are excellent. So if you guys are getting really serious about it, get that pin hooker electric wheel, and they really really help you out in that hand cranking. If you're bringing up just you know a, just the raw weight, or even when you start reeling up the fish. Uh, so having having really good tackle is key with that. Um, you can drop down there. Um, you know, with rig squid um, for, for swordfish, you can rig it strip off a colt. Noasis dome is really good for daytime swordfish in action. For towelfish, uh, like they mentioned, the R&R tackle makes a great deep drive rig. It's got a little glow deal on it. The hooks are smaller, which you mentioned. You know, they hook up great for towelfish. We're working towelfish in about 900 to 1,100 feet of water right on the bottom of the sand down there. Works out great. You can bait it with squid or you can put the fish bites on it, but it's got to make, lay right down on the bottom for those towels. If you're going for the snapper and the grouper, then we're talking, you know, 200 or 400 feet deep, which doesn't sound too deep, but it is when you start manually cranking over that over that structure in the bottom, which is great in this stuff. Right now, it's plenty of action. So you got snapper mixed in, you got grouper mixed in. You don't know what you're going to hook up to. You can jig it off the bottom there. So right now, you're allowed two snapper per person, so it's great. You can bring them up. You don't have to worry about resending them back or embolize. Keep two of them, and you keep on going through the grouper. But if you haven't, you haven't tried the deep dropping stuff and trip, uh, make sure, you know, take your, your tackle with you, but go go do it. This is the time you're definitely going to go hit it out there right now. And I got a picture here of a, uh, a swordfish here. Captain Quebec sent me Woo! out of Matagorda there. They've been hammering the swordfish out there. That's nice. Awesome. Moving over, moving over inshore there, the, the trout fishing. We've been talking about trout, you know, all year long. It's been really, really good. Uh, land cuts producing, and uh, some redfish are showing up in the nine-mile hole. But with the, we've had some higher winds, a lot of higher temps down here in the lower coast, so... To give them their trout, they're, they're moving up in that land cut there. That's why I'd be hiding over there and getting some. Uh, they're on the grass lines and then drop offs. The oil guts are also producing right through there. So use your Rodan trolling motor and you can hit the anchor lock right between the two guts if you're in, a, in one of the oil channels right there. Hit it outside where you can cast right to each edge, both edges of those oil guts. You can free line live croakers, really working the best on those edges. And up to the grass beds, if you're working, say, right around the east channel or the west channel down there. Just go ahead and get your dual power poles or power poles straight down. Free line your live bait right on the edge of that stuff. Let it go with the current. Free line it down there. Works really good. If you're throwing some topwaters early, then go ahead and throw some topwaters really up on that flat and work it right coming off on the edges and work those the grass beds right on the edge also. There's plenty of fish up there, and the slot size, remember, is 17 to 23 inch. So uh, three, three per person. And I'll keep you updated. TPWD regulations are going to be coming out in September. And I think they'll be removing it uh, back into what we had before. We're like five fish per person. I'll keep you updated on that. We've got a picture here of a great one. i got a, a Bones who actually works for me. He went fun fishing. He bought my 18-foot shallow sport. So he, he caught and released his 30-inch trout on a shallow sport. Well, hi, Ooh. Bones. How you doing, Bones? Yeah, Looks like you you're doing, doing just yeah, Bones, fine. Bones, Bones is there. He's all <laughs> fired up. And that was, that, was a, that was his personal best. I had to throw that in there. Oh, tell him moving, congrats. <laughs> moving offshore, uh, like I said, state and federal snapper seasons from full swing. The bite's really on. Uh, the blue water is finally coming in from Mexico. It's uh, it's getting in closer, so the projects are following that stuff into it. They're right now the blue water out of South Padre and Mansfield here. If you kind of head a little bit south, it's about 30 miles out. So the snapper, like we talk about all the time, but there's a reason for it. We got some of the best state water fish I think there is in the world here. Um, you know, and also the federal water is just phenomenal. It's good good everywhere in federal waters everywhere. But the lower coast it's open, which is really phenomenal. Uh, they've been feeding right now. The snapper, I've seen it. The bite's been off a little bit slower, but they're feeding on crabs. I call it a crab hatch, but it's almost over with. So these guys are like a dime size. And once they get to a quarter size or anything else like that bigger, the crabs will move on, drift off, and the bite's going to get better. But right now, it's still phenomenal. So drift over the structure. 
Um, pitch about a one to three ounce trocar eagle claw jig, uh, tip it with some fish bites, which really helps. Look for suspended fish. You know, basically you can just drop it over the boat if you're fishing 100 foot of water, 150 foot of water. Go down 20, go down 40, go down 50, and uh, hit repeat it and stay on them. The Dorado has been really uh, showing up and also in the debris and weed lines. That blue water, which I mentioned, has moved in, so trolling form is really great. Downsides to a smaller Islander lure, rigged with some small ballyhoo. The black backs or a green back works really good. Troll three to five lines at seven and a half to eight knots. Use a pin 30 to 45 40 torque works really good with 30 pound memorial mono. And then uh, keep up with take a take the really good. Just if you can, just go ahead and if you're in the school of chicken dolphin. Just, uh, you know, keep a few of them. Don't have to, to whack them all out of there. These things grow 35 pounds up a year. So if you let them go when you're young, get them down a few months later, they're going to be about twice, three times the size. Well, thanks for that great report, Chad. I'll take your shallow sports hotspots for the lower coast region from here. Captain Chad Kenny says you need to check out the land cut. It's really good trout action along the drop-offs and the grass lines. And redfish are good in the nine-mile hole on Marilure topwaters and soft plastics. And then offshore state and federal water snapper fishing has been excellent. Blue water is moving in closer and producing some of those pelagics like those dolphin he was talking about. Thank goodness. All right, yeah. start packing those coolers and getting your red, white, and blue ready because when we come back, we're dropping our lines in the fish bites middle coast and upper fresh region. But you know what? You see that uh, QR code on your screen there? Yeah, take a look and make sure you scan away for an all access pass to our social media outlets where you can like and follow our Instagram and Facebook pages. And to see all new fishing adventures, tips, and of course reports, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Captain Rick Murphy. We will be right back. We will. The Texas Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Bass Assassin and Saltwater Assassin, the best lures, period. Berkeley, your fish, our science. Murphy's Law Sport Fishing. Book your trip today at murphyslawsportfishing.com. Tin Cup Mountain Whiskey. Shallow Sport, the Texas legend. Rodan, set it, forget it, catch more fish. And Penn, let the battle begin. Dan Benson here from Powerful Shallow Water Anchors. Over 20 years ago, you know, we started out building our Power Pulse Shallow Water Anchors, but our product offering has expanded a lot more these days. We've got our shallow water anchors in many different models. We can work on anything from as small as a stand-up paddleboard up to the biggest bay boat and pontoon. We also have our Power Pulse charging system, which charges your entire boat when you're at home, charges when you're running on the water, and it has an emergency start built in. But now, with our new Power Pulse Move trolling motor, we can move your boat, stop your boat, and charge your boat. So the full product line from PowerPole really covers you from prop to prop, bow to stern. For more information, go to PowerPole.com and that's your PowerPole tip. And it's a good tip at that. All right, now we're checking in with Captain Bink Grimes to get the inshore and offshore deep drop deets from the Fish Bites Middle Coast region. Go for it, Bink. Uh, we do most of our deep dropping around our jetty area since most of our bays are 10 foot or less. However, uh, you know, if you work Port O'Connor Jetty, there's spots that range from like 35 to 65 to 95 foot. Uh, I once hooked a redfish in about 35 foot of water and landed it in about 93 foot of water. That's, that's some deep dropping. Most of our uh, deep dropping inshore for those reds, we're throwing mullet and pogies and large table shrimp. Uh, rare day when a bait doesn't get scooped up by those spawner sized redfish. Our offshore deep drops are for red snapper most of the time. Best depths are the 40 to 80 with sardines and fresh squid, and, and uh, that game's been pretty proficient for most of June. Uh, going with our trout now, uh, uh, Dark Moon the past week has afforded us a minor bite at sunrise and a better bite around mid midday. A lot of the water's been pushed back in the bay uh, this week with the southeast winds. It's pushing those speckled trout to the shorelines and sending us to that, that summer pattern of fishing. It's still 100 degrees over here. Water temperature's about 88 degrees. Uh, this time of year, uh, if you're not fishing rafts of mullet on the shorelines, you're probably wasting your time. We're looking for slicks in the morning and then wade through them and fan casting the grass beds and sand pockets with, with mirror lure she dogs and uh, soft dines and bass assassins. Uh, Main Bay uh, shorelines in San Antonio and Spirit of Santo Bay are still giving up excellent catches of trout. Slicks are showing on the shorelines. 
best color has been chicken on a chain bass assassin. Uh, Wade and Mid Bay Reefs at San Antonio Bay is a lot like our East Matagorda Bay. Uh, we're still uh, catching them on bass assassins, mirror lure little johns. We're drifting and catching limits on reefs, on live shrimp under a popping cork when that, uh, since that water's so hot. Bass drop, chocolate, and West Matagorda Bay have been uh, protected uh, shorelines with reefs and, and, uh, and best on live shrimp. Most of the time, the water's been stained, so a no, noisy cork works. We like throwing those mid-coast corks. The Freeport Jetty is uh, holding trout as well on mullet and shrimp. Drifters in East Matagorda Bay has had a tough time with the wind. We've had some southwest winds. It's dirtied up our water, so we're using those corks uh, and, and really popping them, making long casts, and it attracts the trout. In Rockport, a uh, guide rep price at Trailer Island and Mud Island has been holding lots of trout. Again, you're looking for uh, slicks coming in through the Lydia Ann Channel. We're throwing Texas Custom Lure, Mirror Lure, Fat Boys, Corkies, and uh, She Dog. Uh, photo there, guide Kevin Kosick released his five pounder while drifting in East Matagorda Bay. Caught it on a plum and chartreuse bass assassin. That's one of my favorite baits. Redfish action, most of the fish are about knee deep water around points, guts, and drop offs. Those wading with live shrimp under a popper core are tossing to the edge of those reefs and picking up reds and black drum. There's a lot of action, a lot of, a lot of undersized fish here lately, so, you know, release them quickly back into the water. The water's really, really hot. In Port O'Connor, anglers have picked up redfish along the shorelines and back lakes on the fried chicken uh, bass assassin sea shad paddle tail. They're reading them with one sixteenth ounce sartre uh, jig heads. And then a Matagorda guy, Michael Roth, he's uh, saved many of those windy days. He's working Maverick Bow, Hidden Bow, Green Island, and uh, throwing them up there on those mid coast corks with live shrimp and, uh, and, and, and live pogies. Freeport, Matagorda, Port O'Connor Jetty, always a mainstay for redfish. Uh, they're there right now. There's a lot of white shrimp on the beach right now. Our Gulf boats will, will open back up for that white shrimp season July 15th, and there's a lot of big old shrimp on the beach right now. Offshore, the wind kicked back up and uh, kept a lot of offshore boats pinned to the dock, but Mike Siegel said, uh, 25 foot of water has been holding bull redfish, black tips, and big gaff top. Michael Quebec and Matagorda, that nighttime swordfish action has been great. His pattern has been uh, drifting to hilltops and domes around, uh, from the surface about 300 foot down. Most of those fish have been in the 100 to 200 pound range, about 75 to 80 miles out. And the, all these captains have uh, said it, I've said it before, been very impressed with the Bahio sunglasses. They're wearing them, but they're catching on down here in Matagorda and all along the mid coast. It's a whole new world that's come alive below the surface, and man, we're really enjoying them. So we're, we're hoping that uh, everybody has a great uh, Fourth of July weekend. Honor the flag, have fun with your family, and, and let's keep doing what's best for our bays and oceans. Oh, fantastic Amen. report, Bank. I'll take your mirror lure hot spots from the middle coast region from here. Captain Bink says trout are good while wades, wading the sand and grass in the Port O'Connor area. And you want to use those uh, bass assassins and sheep pups near the jetties. Redfish are good in Matagorda and Maverick Bayou and the cutoff flats. All right, well, Mike McFarland is taking us on a lovely tour of the Upper Fresh region, seeing what the bite is on Lake Fork, Lavon, Athens, Tewakini, and Ray Hubbard. So, Mike, talk to us. Hey, Bree, good to have you. Good to be here as always. It's sure is hot up here. Let's talk about deep water dropping. You know, most of our upper fresh region lakes just don't have deep water. They're overgrown ponds. Um, but we, however, in the heat of summer, we actually do go out deep. We try and find the bigger schools of deep offshore fish. And generally, that's about 18 to 24 foot of water. So we use our sonars to find them and we'll vertically drop drop shot rigs, um, really a lot of soft plastic jigs, text rig worms, but a drop shot rig drop right down in the school vertically, um, rigged with soft plastic worms, creature bait, so in the colors plum, plum apple, green pumpkin, watermelon, watermelon red flake, those are your best choices. The one cool thing about deep dropping like that here, it's not like deep dropping in the ocean or anything, but you get on a big school of fish and once you get the first one to bite, a lot of times you can fire up the entire school. It can really be rewarding. Um, but let's go ahead and move on from the theme and tell you about some largemouth bass on Ray Hubbard with Texas Frenzy Fishing, Joe Shipley. Uh, bass are still being caught there uh, in the deep rocks, brush piles, marina wave breaks, rock bridges and jetties. The big jigs and the big worms, both Texas rigged and shaky head are working well. Again, your best colors there are the plums, the red apples, the red bug, green pumpkin, and believe it or not, peanut butter and jelly, just like the sandwich, peanut butter and jelly. Um, also, some moving baits, crankbaits, and slow rolling spinner baits are working there too. Moving on to Possum Kingdom with Pete Hernandez. You know, not much has changed there. Lake is still completely full. It's clear in the south and stained more in the north. 
lots of top water action going on on Possum Kingdom. Um, my favorite top waters are the Berkeley Jaywalker 110, which is a big one, and the Berkeley Driftwalker 100, which is a little more slender. Your best colors are bone white or just any shad color that you like. And once that sun gets up and that top water bite goes away, go deep, look deep. Your best baits are three quarter ounce jigs in craw colors and 10 to 12 inch bass assassin worms, again in that plum or plum apple. Um, and also sometimes some Texas rig creature baits like brush hogs, those are working good. Matt Cartwright on Tawakini, he says the bass is great there. Again, top water bite, hopping frogs, and the Berkeley El Chapo, which is like a prop bait. Um, during the early mornings, late evenings, midday hit the docks and rocks with crankbaits and soft plastics. Lake Athens with Jay Bonner. Um, water temps ranging in the mid-80s, one to two foot visibility. Fish the edges of the grass in six to ten feet with soft plastic creature baits and worms. Uh, later in the day, look a little deeper on the deep water points and brush piles. Same baits, drop shot rigs and jigs and natural colors are your best baits there. Lake Levon bass fishing. With Kerry Thorne, still the same. Pretty much nothing's changed since last week. Underwater points, rock piles, brush piles, the offshore riprap, and typical summer locations. Um, Kerry likes to start the morning out with spinner baits, um, but the Texas Rig soft plastic worms and jigs and things like that are going to work best. And watermelon red or Okeechobee crawl. My favorite lake, my guide lake on home lake here on Lake Fork. Recent rains brought the lake up again, six more inches. Um, we really have had an up and down with our waters. Drop through it two inches, rises four inches. But right now we're about six inches below full pool. The early mornings you can start on the shallow flats and points with top waters and chatter baits. As the day progresses, move yourself out to 16 to 22 feet of water on submerged points, underwater points, humps, and flats. Um, best baits, again, are the 10 to 12 inch bass assassin worm in plum, plum apple, watermelon candy, or watermelon candy red. Um, that watermelon candy red is critical when the sun is shining high. Go to that watermelon candy red plate. You will see such a different result in more bites. Um, also <laughs> catching some fish on three-quarter ounce football jigs with a crawfish color. And I like the Bass Assassin's whoop -a craw for this. It's a really great trailer for that jig called a whoop -a craw by Bass Assassin. Um, here's a couple big bass that were caught last week with the Bass Assassin big worm. Nice. Oh, wow. It worked. Look at that. Let's go on the crappie <laughs> fishing. Crappie on Ray Hubbard's. Crappie still being caught on the deep bridge pylons. Minnows and hand tied jigs. Lake Levon with Carrie Thorne. Excellent crappie there. Pretty much the same as last week. 12 to 20 feet of water. Most of the schools are suspending in 12 to 14 feet. Hand tied jigs are working best there. Jackie Wiggins on Lake Fork. He said the crappie continue to be great, but they're really moving out to the deep trees, 18 to 28 feet of water. And actually the minnows, minnows this week have been the key. The, the jig bite has slowed down, so the live minnows in 18 to 28 feet are best. Here's a picture of Jackie with happy clients. Happy with some crappie. I love it. Happy with some crappie. Sorry. Real quick white bass <laughs> on, um, on Lake Levon. Still top water bite in the morning, pile tail swim baits. The Berkeley Bullet Pop is good. The Ber Berkeley Jaywalker again is good. And then my favorite lake to, to striper fish is Tawakini. Matt Cartwright is killing it there. It's just week after week. The hybrids are on fire. The big striper's on fire. Live bait, 18 to 25 feet on the ledges. And early morning sand bass schooling. Awesome fishing there. And here's two, two of my favorite picks from Matt. Matt idling out in the morning to go fishing himself. Oh. That's Matt himself. That's and then a nice day's catch with Matt Carlin. Man, I appreciate you guys. It's been a great week. Man, nice. that's awesome. Well, thanks, Have Mike. Have a good weekend. I'll uh, take your uh, upper fresh hot spot region it's from here. Yeah. That Mike was saying, Lake Tawakini is on fire, according to Mr. Matt Cartwright. Great numbers of big stripers, hybrids, and white bass are being caught daily. You can find the stripers and hybrids in their typical deep water locations. And white bass are feeding early and late around the shallow sandbars and reefs. All right, well, the Star Tri Middle Fresh region is looking like a fun place to be this weekend. But before we head out deep, let's get a little sneak peek of what our Taco Marine new products Dave Farrell has for us at the workbench. Dave, it's looking Talk pretty uh, new product over there. Yeah, we've got some cool little squids we're going to be talking about today. Oh, I saw those before the show. You looked pretty excited about those. I'm very excited. Can't wait to talk about them. <laughs> we'll be back. Love a squid. The Texas Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Abu Garcia, Fish to Win, Fenwick, Feel Everything, Diamond Fishing Products, our reputation is on the line, 
Island Lures, Tournament Tackle. Turn on the bite anytime. Tie on a Miro Lure. Front Runner Boats, Performance Built Offshore Fishing Boats made in the USA. And Startron, Start, Run and Store with Startron. Well, we're at the workbench with the Taco Marine Trolling the Edge new product segment. Dave, there's yep. a lot of cool stuff here. Well, we're going to um, start with the coolest there, the TH the Marine through hole live well pump. <laughs> it's 800 gallons per hour. Uh, it's got a three quarter inch hose outlet on it, so you can you know keep big baits alive with that thing. Uh, it's got the straight or the angle mount, the dual position. So yeah. you know if you want to put it back close to the transom, going out the back or something like that. There's a lot of different ways to uh, to mount that thing. It's got third, and it comes with thirty foot leads. So nice. You know, the, so even <laughs> those bigger boats can, yeah, can exactly. Them. Yeah, exactly. Not just those little skiffs. That's right. It's good for fresh and salt water. So you, you use, use it for either one to keep your live baits alive. Cool, cool. Where do we find those? Uh, TH Marine Supplies. Awesome. Dot com. Next, we got these uh, fish bites, fish and chunks. You know, we were talking about uh, deep dropping, and that's pretty much. These things are great for that. These are pretty much what these are made for: is fishing big cut baits on the bottom, and that's what these are. These are a big cut bait, large pennant shaped wedges. Uh, you know, you've got three different scents: a crab, a shrimp, and a squid. They come in that flesh color and uh, they have a longer lasting formula now it's is that they're really thick these these chunks because they know they're going to be sitting down there for so a while. I got to use some of the prototypes mm -hmm. and I've used the production models right and one of my favorite things to use this for is a tipping tipping a jig right if I'm fishing for snapper something like that on the bottom mm -hmm. cobia because it gives it that scent the other thing is is you can fish this just like a dead chunk bait right black drum eat these things like there's no tomorrow this yeah. is one of the best baits that you can just throw back in your tackle box. You don't have to keep it refrigerated. It doesn't spoil on you. Right. You know, it's one of those things where it's always there and you can always be ready for this black drum. Yes. So that's one of the things that I would highly recommend that you guys and gals go check out is that fish bites chunk bait. Red drum will eat it too. Yes, ten, they will. Yeah, 10 baits for a pack and uh, those big reds, like I said, they'll eat it. Go to fishbites.com. Fishbites.com. Next, we and have the Island is... Express with a colored head. You know, back in the day, the Express had a had this kind of head, it was right? A chrome right. head, and they still make this. And we would use this in conjunction with a big Spanish mackerel, and it was called the Chrome Dome yep. because it had that big silver thing sitting on the head of that Spanish big mackerel. Big horse ballyhoo. Yeah, well, yeah. 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 But usually with that mackerel, that's what it was. It was called the Chrome Dome. Yep. But now, with the same jet head, the Island Express comes in colored heads, and you know. Millions of dollars have been won on this thing, so I'm sure that this will keep going. It's got those large 3D eyes on there. This comes with the uh, the, the rubber skirts mm -hmm. and uh, the Express Jet Design. The Express Jet Design puts out a ton of bubbles in, in the water, yeah. and it's great for sitting up on the. It's really light. Like most jet heads are heavy, right. and they. You know, you they really sink. don't want to put them on your outriggers usually unless they're a little small. But this is a big profile bait that you can actually put up on your outriggers and it creates a great big drop bubble trail and the, and the marlin love to so come real quick, sniff at it. There's got to be something with these jet heads about making a vibration or some kind of sound underwater as well. I don't think so. I don't know. You know, I don't even don't think, think they, I don't, I, they have to come up and get a good bubble of air before they even make any bubbles. Okay. So if it's okay. underneath the water, you know, a lot of those jet headed lures that are under, that's, that are heavy and stay under the water, they're really not you much think they lose anything. their effectiveness. Yeah, because there's not no air going through those holes. It's just gotcha. water. Gotcha. And it might make the skirts billow out a little bit, but that's, you know, whatever. Anyway, these are three ounces, 10 inches, 10 and a half inches long. Wahoo Marlin Sailfish Dorado. You can Everything. go to Miralure. Everything Go them. shop Miralures.com to get you one of those. And then these are really cool. Yes, these are new from Nomad. Uh, this is called the Squid Trex. This is a vibrating lure. Uh, they have a lot of vibes in Australia, and that's where these were created. A, a lure that, you know, like a like a rattle trap type yeah. of thing, yeah. uh, a lipless plug. But these things really are a like soft vibration with a uh, a core of a squid in the shape, and it's got four four different sizes. A realistic swimming action. You can slow troll them. You can deep deep jig them. They have internal weights inside, so you know it's. Uh, you Makes can probably really, cast these for really heavy or ling, you know. Cut, yeah, cast these, yeah. Cast these Anything well. they'll eat a squid will eat that thing. They, yeah. they they make four different sizes, up to a big one that's a four and three quarter ounces. So you can fish them deep; that'll get down in there. Gotcha. Uh, 
Yeah, and they and they have a lot of them with. Uh, they all have a squid scent, but some of them have glow as well, and UV. You can get the UV ones or the glow ones as well. And where do we find this? Uh, Nomadtackle.com. Fantastic. Great wow. job, Dave. That was some great deep digging yeah. jabber I'm over there, you, Dave. Like you it, did so good. Where like are we going next, right? <laughs> good few products, Can't gentlemen. Speak. I know. All right, the Star Charm Middle Fresh region is wrapping things up for our fun weekend ahead. So, Matt, tell us how we're adjusting our technique for those deeper fish. All right, Bree, I'll sure do it. Uh, All right. You know, when we talk deep here in the middle fresh region this time of the year, we're generally talking somewhere around 20 to 30 feet. Uh, these fish are seeking out that cool oxygenated water down at those depths where most of the bait fish are also going to be holding out, uh, like the shad. Now, this time of the year, you're usually going to see a thermocline start to develop on most of our lakes. This thermocline is really important to notice because our game fish that we're after and the bait fish are not going to go below it. So that line lets you know where the fish are going to hit their maximum depth at, and you can easily find that on your electronics. It's just basically like a fuzzy line, kind of like a debris line on your sonar, usually hanging out somewhere around that 20 to 30 feet mark. I've been seeing one on Toledo Bend lately, here and there about 30 feet down. And so once you've determined where that line is, that's really the key to your deep fishing is uh, locating that line because once you've located it, you know the fish are going to be just above it because it's like they hit a wall when they get to that. They're not going to go below it. So they tend to stack up on the points and the humps and the edges of the flats where they intersect with the deeper water where that thermocline is. So that really narrows down your search right now. And then once you've located those areas, you can, like for the bass, you can d drop a drop shot or a spoon down through those schools of bait fish in those areas and usually pick up some fish. So that's my best tips for the, the deep drop. Just really focus on that thermocline and um, use some vertical jig and bait to get down there through the shad balls to catch the, the fish like the bass or the white bass that are uh, hanging out below. Now, the crappie, I'm gonna start talking about them this week uh, as my species number one here. They uh, tend to hang out a little higher up in the water column. They don't like going down to the bottom as much around that thermocline. They tend to suspend up a little higher. Now, here on Toledo Bend, the, the bite has been a little slower, but, you know, it's been good enough to keep the fun going. We're still catching a good mess of fish every day and some big slabs as well, so that's keeping it fun. Uh, this is normally a great time of the year. They've just kind of been in a funk lately, and so uh, they're still grouped up in about 15 to 30 feet of water around the timber, the bridge pilings, and some of the deeper docks that provide good shade. They're usually suspended about 10 to 20 feet down in the water column, and the best bait has been the live minnows. But jigs are good for catching the biggest fish. So that monkey milk panfish assassin has been a great bait for me lately for catching those biggest ones, especially if you sit back off the fish a little bit and cast it to them. Um, throwing that on a 16th or a 32nd ounce jig head, just depending on the wind. We've got a photo of one of those big crappie we were just talking about there with uh, oh, Mr. Ray big. and Miss Cindy Peavy. They got a big old Salida Bend slab there. That's a pretty now, fish. Now going over to Rayburn. Uh, the crappie have been biting a little bit better at Rayburn. They're a little bit behind schedule this season because of the high water they've had over there. But I'm hearing that now that the water's coming down, they're really stacking up in 15 to 30 feet of water, and they're catching them good on the brush and timber out there on live minnows and jigs. Now up at Richland Chambers, Mr. Thurman reports a similar story, that the crappie have been biting really well up there. He says they're hanging out around the bridges and the brush piles about 15 feet down, regardless of the bottom depth. Now I'm going to change it up to the catfish. Uh, you know, we tend to, a lot of us are guilty to kind of pull away from the catfish. But here on Salida Bend lately, we've got a few guys that have been catching a ton of them, and they've been having a blast doing it. It seems like these catfish are always biting, even when everything else is not. And they make for some pretty good table fare. Uh, they've been stacked up in about 15 to 25 feet of water lately around the points and the channel swings. And live minnows have been working great on a tight line setup for catching them. Now I'm going to switch it again over to the white bass. We're hitting all kinds of species this week. On the white bass over at Sam Rayburn, they've been really schooling heavy on the point and they're biting jigs and crankbait. Now that's usually a dawn and dusk bite. So you're going to want to focus on those low light hours right around sunrise and sunset to catch them schooling and feeding heavy. Up at Richland Chambers, pretty much the same story. Mr. Thurman informed me that the white bass are biting there early in the mornings around the 309 flat. And uh, there's some small hybrids mixed in with them as well. Now I'm going to finish out real quick with the uh, largemouth bass 
over yeah, at quickly. Whistling Chambers, they're hanging in the brush in 15 to 20 feet. They're catching them on bass assassin and soft plastic. And then down at Rayburn, once again, a little bit better bite at Rayburn. They're biting pretty good in 15 to 25 feet of water on the Carolina rigs and the crankbait. And then they're getting some top water bite around the grass early and late in the evening. Well, thanks a lot, Matt. Here are the Rodan Marine Systems hotspots for the Middle Fresh region. Captain Matt Locher says crappier biting around the timbers and bridges on live minnows and jigs in 15 to 25 feet of water. Catfish are excellent in 15 to 30 feet on live minnows. White bass are feeding early and late on Sam Rayburn and Richland Chambers, and largemouth bass are biting topwater baits early and late, and bottom baits deeper in the day. Well, I don't know about y'all, but I am so ready for our long 4th of July weekend ahead. It's kind of interesting. It's almost Happy like somebody birthday, might have Bree. a birthday. Thanks. Yeah. Our country had a birthday and you're well, having a birthday. Well, it'll be next week with One more year yes. in the 30s. Yes, I'm going to celebrate every day this weekend just because I can. Why not? I would if I Why were you too. All right, well, <laughs> how old are you? I'll be 33. Oh, my goodness. Oh, how rude of you to ask, Little but I'll child. answer. Thanks for joining in. Happy 4th of July weekend, Independence Day. Get out there, catch those fish. We'll see you next week.